Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today I want to showcase a little bit of software which I've created which I hope is going to help the repair community and there's a couple of reasons that I'm doing this. Number one is because it will help me and number two because a friend and someone I, who I am honoured to call a colleague, Lewis Rossman, recently made a request for someone to do this. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm an electronic technician primarily. I'm also a YouTube quote, quote teacher where I teach people to fix their own electronics. And I'm also a hobbyist programmer. So that's why my name is The Coder. I mean, The Coder was actually a name from an egotistical, hey, look at me, I can write code in a somewhat amateurish way, 10 to 15 years ago. But that being said, I can write code and I created this software because Lewis Rossman asked someone to release an open source version of some other software, which is paid from a company or person called BWE, Better Way Electronics. So crap really hit the pan over the past couple of days where BWE has basically been banning his users and he banned quite a few streamers as well for just having competing software open on the computer. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into the models of it. I think it's wrong. Um, he's claiming that because it's, uh, well, quote, <clears throat> his intellectual property, what people are using, just because we're using the same error codes as him, he's got a right to ban people for having a website open. That website, by the way, is my website. Now, a little bit of backstory is that I got sent a, around about 1,400 codes from a few other people in the community. I put those into a database. I paid for the hosting and stuff for a couple of years. And I basically created a website where people could use that database and search an error code, which was put out by UART. Now, UART is a diagnostic tool and we use it to connect to the PlayStation 5 and get error codes when we've got things like a power issue or something like that. But it spits out basically a error code with no description. So what I did was I created a database and I took the code what other people gave to me and put them in that database. BWE spat his dummy out because he says that someone stole the code from him. I don't know who, I don't know if it's true, I don't know where the codes come from. All I know is that I posted them on a database after I got sent them. That's irrelevant. The point is, he was banning people just for having my website open in the browser, which is wrong. Because not only does that mean that he's persecuting people for using competing software, but it also means that he's able, or his software is able, to see what's going on on your computer, which again is wrong. So I basically, well, I've been saying for weeks that he shouldn't be doing this, but then Lewis Rossman come along and said it as well, and he asked someone to create some competing software. So I'll leave a link to Lewis Rossman's channel down in the top pinned comment, along with a link to my software, but I just want to show you what this software can actually do. So up until now, like I said, you could, you could read the BIOS chip or read the dumped BIOS chip and modify it to work on another console. You know, you could reprogram the uh, serial number or you could change the flags on it so as it converted it into a digital edition, uh, read the motherboard serial, stuff like that. So that was basically that. And I only created that software as a middle finger to BWE because last year I released a video showing people how to bypass the disk drive checks on a PlayStation 5 to be able to update their console when their disk drive fails. He wasn't happy because one day later he was releasing this paid software. He was pretty peeved and he started slating my method saying that it will break consoles. Now listen... Whether or not, you know, you get the odd failure here and there where the conversion doesn't work or the BIOS chip transfer doesn't work, I have never once had a complaint of anyone saying that a BIOS has caused their console to break or caused their console to get banned. The first console I ever did the, you know, serial number swap on it and converted it to a digital edition, my son uses to this day, well over a year later, okay, there is absolutely nothing wrong with swapping the BIOS as long as the serial number matches. Even if the serial number has been banned by Sony, they don't ban the serial number that's stored on the BIOS chip, they ban the serial number that's stored on the motherboard, they ban the hardware ID. The serial number that's stored on this is purely used to, com to make sure that the disk drive matches the console, right? So he was slating my method, so I created some software in retaliation, and I released it for free. It was closed source, but I released it for free, and that annoyed him even more. I'm going to be honest, it was pretty fun. I'm an immature little 
toss pot. Yeah. I'm a troll. Everyone knows it, okay? So, yeah, up until recently, everything was fine, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But then it started coming to light that he was banning people just for having competing software open. So, for example, my software, my website, my database, or, you know, some other competing UART software. And that's unacceptable because, I mean, Lewis Rossman gives a better example of this than me, but that's basically like, you know, buying a Tesla and they're saying, oh, well, no, you can't do that because you've got a uh, Nissan parked on your drive. You can't use our car. You know, <laughs> Lewis Rossman gives better examples, but either way, it's wrong. You cannot block someone and take their license away just because they have competing software on their computer, okay? You can't, it just doesn't work like that. That's not how it works. So Lewis Rossman put a bounty out and he said, anyone who can create some open source software, there's a bounty on it for you. You know, I'll donate money towards the project and help keep it going. Because Lewis runs a repair preservation group non-profit and basically he wants to donate money from that. Now the money I don't really care about, Right. You know, I mean, yes, it would be nice if, you know, for example, Lewis said, you know what, you've done a good job here. You're welcome to the bounty, whatever. I wouldn't turn it down. I'm not going to lie. Money's money at the end of the day. But that's not the main intention for doing this. The main intention for doing this was to give something back to the community that's given me so much over the past four years. And like I said, if Lewis wants to give me some bounty money, you know, I'm going to take it. It'll feed my kids. But I'm just saying. I've created this software and it's available, it's open source, you can download it, you can do what you want with it. So if we look here, this is my database of error codes, ignore that for now. But if we look here, we've got on github.com, I'll leave a link to this in the top pinned comment. But on github.com, we've got uh, the code of YouTube, PS5 Normal Modifier, and you can download the source code, which is just here. But if you're not a programmer, if you don't want to tinker with it, don't worry, that's absolutely fine, not a lot of people are. You can download the standalone version. And I've just downloaded this a couple of minutes ago. So as you can see here, I've got that here. But basically what this is essentially is it's going to allow you to connect to UART on the computer and read the error codes in a nice readable format with a nice Windows GUI style application. You know, the stuff that everyone's used to. So if you're not used to running Python, if you're not used to running command line, don't worry because this is a standalone application that runs in a GUI a graphical user interface so it's accessible to anyone if you know how to connect up UART to your PS5 you can use this software it's very very straightforward so when you download the standalone you'll be presented with this so we've got the error database there which you can download updates periodically from my website or if you want to maintain your own database you know you can copy the XML format that this uses if you know what you're doing and you can basically you know use your own database or you can run it offline but if we launch this software double click this and you're welcome to virus scan this as well essentially what people were presented with to start with was just this page here so that's where you can just select a random ps5 nor dump and you can read it you can modify it you can change the board variant the ps5 model so digital to disk blah 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 but that's not the focus of this right this the focus of this is this tab here which is uart communication now, I've already got this console connected to UART and I've got it plugged in. So, I'm not going to show you how to do that here. I did do a video a couple of days ago and I showed how to do that. So, I'll leave a link to that as well. But, essentially, this is connected up and it's plugged in. I'm just going to connect to my UART reader on the computer. So, I know from memory that it's going to be COM19. So, I'll just go here. Click on COM19. You can refresh the ports if you want and it'll give you an up-to-date list. And click on connect. So as you can see here, we've got connected to UART via COM port COM19 at a board rate of 115,200. Now I'm going to be honest. I'm not an engineer. I don't know what the board rate means. I just know that it needs to be 115200 to connect to the PS5. So that's what it's set to. So once you're connected, what you can do is you can download the Ever database. So if we click on that, it's bugging out a little bit, but I'll work that out. That's whatever. You know, slight little. Slight little bugs and stuff, still stuff I need to work out, but it's going to be maintained and updated as we go along. So be sure to check for updates periodically. But what we can do is we can download the error database, and if you look at this here, you can see that the last time this was modified was 9.06 p.m. on today's date. That's the 25th of the 4th. So if I click on yes here, you'll see most recent offline, update, uh, offline database has been updated. 
and that's updated it to 9.24 p.m. So that's the latest update. So that's the latest database. So what that button does essentially is it connects to this other page, uartcodes.com forward slash xml.php. So essentially UART codes, like I said, is where you can search for an Evercode. So if you type in an Evercode that you get from the PlayStation 5 UART and you type it into here, and this website is a work in progress, to be honest, it'll probably stay like this forever because it works, it shows you the Evercodes, and all I have to do is just add database, add Evercodes to the database. But you can get the Evercode. But what you can also do is you can get a XML version of the Evercode. So if you want to run it in your own software, you can. You know, you can use my database, whatever, I don't really care. But you can basically use this. So if you just type in the Evercode, so uartcodes.com forward slash xml.php, question mark, Evercode equals 808C4E90, right? So we're passing the Evercode variable to the URL. And that'll give me that exact error report. So that gives me the error report in XML format. But if you just do xml.php, so uartcodes.com forward slash xml.php, it'll give you every error code in my database. So it might take a little while to load, but it'll give you basically every single error code that's in my database in XML format. So what my software does there is it just basically downloads the latest database and it just basically downloads all of this in XML format. You can check the code if you want, that's what it does and it links to uartcodes.com forward slash xml.php. So then what you can do is you can use it offline, so you can use an offline database. So you can either use offline or you can use online, it doesn't really matter. But you can click on get error codes, I'm going to use online for now, but get error codes. And as you can see there, it does take a while with the online version. So I do recommend downloading the offline version and then just periodically updating it. You know, you can update it every day if you want. It doesn't matter. But just periodically update it, you know, or you can go to uartcodes.com and if the number on the home page changes, if that goes up or down even, you know, some codes might get modified, just re-download it. And then you'll have an up-to-date database based on what all you've got. Or you can just keep it as it is, whatever. It doesn't matter. It comes with all 1,422 codes. So you can basically click on get error codes and that'll get a up-to-date list of the error codes from the PlayStation 5. And as you can see, it comes up in a nice readable format. So if we search this error code on my database now, you'll see it's gonna come up with the exact same description. There we go. So HMI report findings, 900002, and everything's hunky-dory. So, what that'll do is it'll check the top 10 error codes in the database and it will basically pass them. It'll give you a readable format so you don't have to know XML or be able to understand XML to be able to read it. It gives you a readable, fo readable format where you can easily diagnose the console and then you can take action depending on what you find. Some error codes might not exist, but it is what it is. So basically, you can also send a custom command. So if you want to, for example, send a command just to fetch error log zero, you can do that. So you click on that, click on that there, and as you can see, we've got an OK uh, report, and that comes up as C zero nine zero 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 two. So basically, all that this is doing is taking the error codes that are spat out of the system passing it and then getting the bit which matters, which is this second lot of uh, characters here. So this second um, second code. And then it passes that through my website or through the offline database, tries to find a match and tell you what's wrong. So you can also type in, for example, Everlog clear, and that'll clear the Everlogs. I said that'll clear the Everlogs. Thank you. So we've got a success there. And then if we type it again, uh, for some reason that didn't actually clear the Everlogs. I think this actual board is bugging out because I was messing around with it and stuff before and it kept on bringing the error code back. But I think it's actually messing around. Uh, you know, I think it's actually uh, bugging out on me and keeps power cycling. But 
There we go. Okay, so that actually cleared that time for some reason. Uh, so even though we said it cleared last time, we didn't. But those error codes will probably come back again in a minute. Let's see if they do. There, there we go. So it is pericycling. So that issue there is literally just something wrong with that board that I've got on the desk. But basically, that's it. You can t you can send custom commands. You can get the error codes in a readable format. You can wipe your error codes, and you can use the online or the offline database. So I think it's a pretty useful tool. Like I said, Lewis Rossman asked someone to create an open source version, so that is what I've done. It's available on GitHub. It's free to download. I do have a Patreon page if you do want to buy me a coffee, or you can literally just click on this little button here. Well, that text at the bottom where it says small donation, whatever. Buy me a coffee if you want to buy me a coffee. I would really appreciate it, but this software will always be open source. It will always be free. I will never block it just for using someone else's software because it's not my bloody computer and it's up to you what you do with your computer. So that's going to be it. I hope this helps the community. Thank you to Lewis Rossman for pushing me to actually do this, you know, pushing me to actually make a start on this because I wanted to do it anyway, but I never had the motivation to actually do it. Uh, but yeah, I hope it helps the community. If it helps you to repair your own console or if it helps you to repair a console for a customer, then absolutely great. It's done its job, and you know I can uh, I can rest easy knowing that I'm helping the community out and giving back to a community which has given me so much in the past. That might be a bit cheesy, but I don't care. I'll end it on a high note. Fuck BWE. Open source wins every single time. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye now.